Hey guys and welcome back to another video in which I discuss my ayahuasca adventures with the shamanic medicine of ayahuasca. And this will be journey number five. And once again it's with uh, Santo Daime. <clears throat> and this happened in uh, July 2016. I arrived at same Santo Daime church as before. Everything was exactly the same until I took my first dose. When I approached the man serving the daime, he asked me, do you want a little or a lot? I paused for a second because nobody has asked me that before. And then I said, um, let spirit guide you. Uh, he smiled and then he poured the dose. He gave me the cup and then said, how about medium? But to me, the cup appeared full. <laughs> I told Pachamama, Namaste, the spirit within me recognizes the spirit within you. I tried to gather myself and to be humble, have a, a, a humble um, you know, presence within me while I drank the dose. So then I drank the, the dose and trusting that it was the dose uh, spirit wanted me to have, I thanked the man serving and then I sat down. I took a large gulp of water and I sloshed it around my mouth and the nauseating taste uh, went down. So I was just trying to, you know, wash the taste out. If anybody's had ayahuasca, it's, 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 it's disgusting. It is probably the well, I won't say the worst drink because I have actually had worse, believe it or not, but it is really, really foul tasting. Um, it's very, uh, <laughs> if you can imagine eating, drinking a root, oh, well, that's pretty much, I mean, that's, you're drinking a vine, so, you know. Um, so anyway, I, uh, then I took a large gulp of water to get the taste out. Uh, one thing to note is uh, the most beautiful medicines in the world taste horrible. But if you think about it, taste is an illusion after all. So, just something to think about. Food for thought, if you will. So I started to meditate and I visualized the crystal that was given to me on my last journey. It was floating in front of me, and it was cleansing the energies all around me. I directed more of my energy into the crystal, and I visualized the energy of radiating out to everybody in the ceremony. I felt that the healing energy was blue, and I focused on this meditation. If I paused for a moment, I would feel nauseous, so I continued to meditate and radiate the healing energy. As I was meditating, a talking shaker was passed around to the participants in the ceremony. And when the shaker got to me, I said, I want to allow the experience to happen and not try to control it. And that was my intention. So after the shaker was passed through everybody, we read the prayers of one presence and then the healers started to sing. I sang along with them, but I did not feel nauseous until the shaman started to sing his ikaros. I felt a purge coming up, so I grabbed my bucket and I tried to release it by vomiting, but nothing would come out. No vomit, no tears, or anything. I tried to take deep breaths to get it up, but still nothing was being purged. I just wanted the nausea to go away, and I knew that vomiting helps with that. I chugged a half bottle of water and went back to meditating while sitting up. I soon felt the need to vomit and I reached for my bucket again and released what I felt like a huge purge, but when I finally did release it, it turned out to be very little. I went back to meditating and the nausea had faded. I heard a woman on the other side of the ceremony cry out in fear. I saw a healer rush over to her and hold her hand which was stretched out to the sky. It looked like she was pushing energy up and out of the woman and giving it to the sky, to Father Sky. 
I envisioned my crystal sending out blue healing energy towards her, and I asked my spirit guides to assist her with her healing. I could tell many of the others who were still aware were also doing the same thing. After what seemed like a couple of minutes, the woman stopped screaming, and a wave of bliss came over her. I think it is important to note that the shaman did not stop singing the Ikaros at any time during her struggle. In fact, he increased the volume. Um, what I mean by increase the volume is he, he just uh, he sang more intensely, more uh, you know affirming, and and the intention. Uh, level was raised. Um, a few moments later, I felt a really, s I felt really sleepy, so I laid down. I listened to the shaman Zikaros, which brought forward a web of some sort. I've seen this web before. It does not bring on good feelings with it. It's like a bunch of squares weaved in the form of a web, like a painting. And once again, uh, if you watch. Um, the Doctor Strange that came out in 2017 the part where the I think it's Kaecilius or something he touches the floor and then the mirror world appears and all those squares just start multiplying as the, the floor is opening up uh, that that is what that looks like almost exactly uh, like all those squares just form like a web and like a painting and it just opens up just like a lot like that movie so I don't know maybe it was in the mirror dimension who knows these dimensions don't have names when you go there they don't say welcome to the mirror dimension or welcome to the fifth dimension that's why like people that say like oh yeah I was in like the you know ninth dimension it's like well did anybody tell you you were in the ninth dimension like, if you went and met a being, and then they're like, hey, yeah, by the way, this is the ninth dimension, okay. Then I guess that's a fair way of saying you're in the ninth dimension. But, you know, there's no labels or anything. You're just you're just in a place that is not familiar. At least for me, anyway. Um, so, yeah, so the the form of a web like a painting. Suddenly, uh, frightening faces started to appear within this painting, and like my last journey. But this time I didn't open my eyes. I stayed with it, and I stared at the faces. I then saw that the faces turned into blue magenta and gold sparkles. The sparkles slowly formed a tunnel, which felt very pleasant and I slowly drifted further into it. The tunnel made slow turns and twists. It felt like I was drifting down a slow river or going on a very slow roller coaster. Suddenly, I was instantly transported to a scene where I was looking at a large green hill with a large granite rock floating above it. On top of this rock, there was a castle, and it reminded me of the castle from the movie Harry Potter, uh, Hogwarts. Uh, for some reason, the castle did not interest me. It was like I've seen it so many times that it was nothing out of the ordinary. But what did interest me were the giant eyeballs clinging to the large granite floating rock. The eyeballs were leaking tears, which turned into roots from a tree. These roots were wrapping around the granite floating rock, and suddenly I was instantly back in my body at the ceremony. And as you can see the um, on your screen before you, uh, that painting, I actually, that's my painting, and that's what I saw. That's the closest I can get to painting almost exactly what I saw. Um, one thing I didn't mention in, in my journal, but there were stars in the uh, the background, and uh, yeah, it, it was it was a lot like the painting. I guess in my painting, I didn't um, I focused more on the castle and uh, the giant granite rock with the eyeballs rather than the uh, the green hills. 
but there were green hills. There, you know, there was nothing um, out of the ordinary with these green hills. Um, they just seemed like, you know, bright green hills you'd see in Ireland or Scotland or something like that, you know. Anyway, so the shaman had finished singing the Icaros, and one of the healers asked for a time of silence. I thought to myself, oh great, I can take a nap now. I thought my journey was over and I could just rest. But as you probably guessed, I was wrong. As I laid there trying to get some sleep, the thoughts kept occurring to me that this time I was actually going to die. I thought of the possibility that I was actually going to reincarnate as an alien on another planet and that I would not come back to this body. I thought of my family, I thought of my beautiful wife and kids. I thought that if I went to sleep that I would never see them again. I opened my eyes and I felt the need to vomit. One of the guardians guided me to a private room so I wouldn't disturb the silence of the ceremony with my purging because as I told you guys I'm a loud purger. Like I, I, I don't have the ability to vomit uh, quietly. As some people do, and you know, all you know, big thumbs up to those guys. I'm just not one of them. For some reason, when it comes out, it comes out with a a yell. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so. I didn't want to disturb, you know, the silence either, so I, you know, went with the Guardian, of course. Um, but when I got to the room and I tried to purge, nothing would come out. So after trying over and over again to vomit, the Guardian told me if I wasn't going to purge, then we should get back to the ceremony. And I agreed, so we walked to the ceremony circle. When we got back, everybody was singing and dancing. I thought that since everyone was up and dancing that I should stay up with them, so I danced. I still felt nauseous, but I danced anyway. As I danced, I felt the purge suddenly shoot up my esophagus, and I ran to a bucket that was conveniently near me, and I just let it out. It was still just a little bit of vomit, but it was my last purge for the evening. I went back to dancing, and moments later, one of the healers felt a bird spirit take over her body. Her arms stretched out like wings, and she made a screeching sound like an eagle. She screeched over the heads of those that were still in their journey, laying down. It reminded me of an eagle frightening predators from its nest. She screeched around the circle for a while. She went back to her space and sat quietly in meditation as if the eagle landed in its perch. Uh, I'd like to stress that she didn't touch any of the other, um, you know, she didn't touch any, any of the participants. Um, she was just, it was like the eagle aspect. She was allowing the eagle aspect to help with her healing and the healing of others. Um, nobody seemed startled by it. It was actually very pleasant. The group sang the hummingbird chant that danced more and more. One of the women dancing caught my eye. She was dancing like an Egyptian goddess. I, I thought of the goddess Isis, and it appeared that a goddess had taken over her body and was dancing through the woman. Eventually the dancing went back to normal and the movements were not flowing as smoothly. The woman was still dancing but she was controlling her movements and turned into more of a celebration dance. The dancing slowed down. This is the overall dancing. Um, the dancing slowed down and we all thanked our ancestors and spirit guides. We thank Jesus, Joseph, Mary, Pachamama, Mother Earth, Aya, Ayahuasca, um, Oshun, Jamanja, Shiva, um, Gnesha, 
Father Sky and so on and so forth and pretty much any any deity that anybody you know was pretty much comfortable with I mean it's it's pretty open you know it's like it's kinda like a free-for-all like you know bring your deity who whatever you feel comfortable with whatever guide you feel comfortable with you know bring it and then if it's if it's nothing if it's just Zen then that's fine too it's it's really um it's it's interesting that they call this a religion because it's really you know not religious as in the traditional sense you know like if you go to a Christian church you better be praying to Jesus you know Jesus God and the Holy Spirit that is it you you know you know nothing else right so no other spirit guides no ancestors nothing you know and angels only if you know Jesus sent them and even then you don't pray to the angels yeah uh, this is not like that at all it's like if there's a deity that you feel like you want to show some respect to you go right ahead and do so and this includes plants animals people you know elements you name it you know um, and so I mean the list can just go on and on and on you know um, Uh, for me, one of the, uh, I hate to say deities, I like, uh, beings, just, you know, ascended beings, uh, dimensional beings, I mean, after all, we are dimensional beings, believe it or not, humans are dimensional beings, uh, and one of those was, uh, the goddess Isis, because I felt that her energy was there, even though I didn't necessarily see her, I just, I felt like her presence was there, and it was helping us all dance um, and you know that's just how I felt and I, I, I liked it, it was pleasant so the next day while hanging out in my backyard I saw the birds that were flying around and they were chirping much closer and more intensely than before Two red robins, in particular, stayed with me the entire time I was out there. They looked like the same ones that came to visit me after my last journey. Is it possible that the birds can sense the medicine? Like they can sense the medicine within me? Is it possible that Mother Earth's creatures, animals, plants, birds, you know, bugs, and so on, can they sense the medicine within a human? I don't know. That's a, that's a question that needs to be answered. Um, could the birds sense my high vibration? They were also an unusual amount of butterflies fluttering around my backyard. Hummingbirds also came to visit a few times and a big black beetle flew really close to me. I looked up at the sky and I saw a veil. It was like a movie screen before the film starts to play, except the pixels were moving back and forth and swirling in all directions. I felt like this was another gift, like this was an ability I unlocked within me to indicate the level of my vibration. I noticed the pixels got more intense and moved faster as I was in a meditative state of mind. I felt that the trade-off was that I could keep the ability as long as I don't eat meat. So in a way, spirit was calling me to be a vegetarian. I accepted this gift as long as this gift remained active within me. I will not eat meat. And still to this day, I haven't touched meat. Um, at first it was a struggle, but like any addiction, after a while, after a while it goes down. 
Um, and now it's at the point where I don't even, you know, think about it, to be honest. I mean, I could have, uh, you know, I could sit with my family, you know, there's other members of my family, you know, they do eat meat and they have barbecues and whatnot, you know, and at first it was kind of bothersome, like I wasn't able to sit with them, you know, because I would crave the meat, but now it's like not even, not even a thought, uh, and it feels wonderful, and it may not be for everybody, but it is definitely for me, and it has definitely helped with my spiritual process. Uh, and it's a lot easier to purge when you're, you know, when your body just hasn't had meat. You don't have meat in your blood, and, and uh, you know, the other uh, importance uh, that I learned later on is about parasites and how much parasites you know meat is infested with parasites and these are bad parasites these are the parasites that cause diseases um, and there will be more videos about parasites for sure uh, this was just you know the introduction to you know hey um, it, it's time to you know kick kick the meat you know also, you know, I say spirit is calling me to be a vegetarian. Um, I believe this is spirit within. So this is me. It's like my inner desire that I didn't even know I had. And I desire to connect with the animals and to connect with these birds. And I really do believe that these birds can tell when you have eaten chicken or when you have eaten pretty much one of them uh, would you like to be around would you like to go hang out you know with a cannibal um, or a being that eats humans I sure would not so you gotta think maybe these birds are the same way and I've noticed that when I you know, I've, I'm so much more connected to birds now uh, that there's not even, you know, a trace of meat within me anymore. And uh, I feel that it's a, it's a step to take along the spiritual path. And if you look at people that have devo devoted their lives to spirituality, you know, like monks and shaman um, you know they're they're vegetarian you know uh, even vegan but uh, this this step was vegetarian so uh, yeah not everybody is called to be a vegetarian but I feel that this is something spirit is guiding me to do I still have friends and family that do eat meat, and I don't pressure them about it or make them feel bad for doing so. They just have not been called to do so, and that is their path. Love is accepting somebody who is walking a different path, even if you don't understand why. Aho, Matakwiyase, to all my relations. And that's it for my, uh, journal entry um, I do know people that uh, drink ayahuasca and they do eat meat and they are wonderful healers so it's it's not a uh, requirement for sure but for me it was um, it's an individual choice and for me I felt like that was the choice I needed to make um, and that choice can only come from within, you know. So that is my fifth journey. I hope you guys enjoy it. And I hope you guys make it to the dimension where you see the floating castle with the giant eyeballs. <laughs> uh... It's pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, 
Um, now, you know, just getting back there is uh, the next, you know, you know it exists, so now get, get, go back, you know, how to get back to that dimension. And that's where the learning really comes in, It's when you start to learn how to get back to these different dimensions, these different um, realms, different places in your dreams. So I think this video has ran long enough and I can talk for a long time on this. Um, as you can see I'm very passionate about this topic. So always remember in every journey to ground to Mother Earth and travel safe in the love and the light. Peace be with you.